So today I'm going to show you how to repair a Whirlpool washing machine with no power. So here's the plug. I'm gonna plug it in. Slides should come on so we have no power on the washer. This is a very common problem on these models and I bought this one at the junkyard. I want to repair it and resell it. I can't, can't spend any money on it. So it's a challenge to repair it without buying any part because I want to sell it for cheap and still have some profit. So first thing I did when I got there, let's unplug it first. First thing I did was to check the tank see if it's not broken it rotates freely in the, and it's not broken it's a very common problem with these models also so the tank being good I thought to myself well it must have a power su supply problem because they are the two main problems on this model is the broken tank and the power supply problem and sure enough we have no power This is actually very simple to repair and I'm going to show you how to do it. First, let's uh, get an overview of stuff on this machine. We have the water inlet solenoids here. These are coils that open or close the water for the machine. We have two of them because we have separate compartments for detergent and uh, softener or whatever. We got here our control module. This is where the fault is. This is a, we call this Pressostat. I don't know if it's correct name in English, but this tells the machine when the tank is full of water. Down there, that black and white part it's the door lock, always a source of trouble. This is the filter, line filter. This can be bypassed if it ever blows up or smokes, you can bypass this, but it's always a good idea to replace it if it's bad. We have our pulley and our belt right here. The motor and the water drain pump is on the bottom of the machine. I don't need to go there, so I'm not going to show that right now. That's it. In order to take it apart, you pull the, the detergent compartment, you click here, pull it off, and we have this screw, this screw, and a couple of rusty screws over here, and then the whole panel comes off, and we can access the control module. I usually have been doing videos about vintage radios and vintage TV restoration and repair. This is a bit different than what I used to upload, but since I am, oops, <laughs> well, less work for me, I guess. Since uh, <laughs> this is a bit different than what I'm used to upload, but always something that you it's useful to know you may have a similar model washer and it's uh, always nice to know the common faults and how to repair and it's something that i do on a daily basis and then probably i will start to show that a bit more i also ha have their uh, refrigerator for repair another one here and a couple more machines outside I'm going to repair today but this is the most easy and obvious repair and this is what I'm going to film today because I don't have time to, to film all of them there you go there's your control module no need to get all pedantic about marking the wires etc because they only go in one place so you can Remove all this crap and fitting it is fitting it is intuitive. 
So I'm going to remove this and I'll get back soon. So we got our control module out and as I was suspecting we got here a resistor can't really see that on camera but this resistor is a bit black and it's open and why why does this resistor get open well this is actually a, pro a protection or I don't know if it's a fusible resistor or whatever but it's a protection and this resistor goes open when this IC fails this is a switching IC, basically a power supply in a package IC. It starts with an LNK. And this LNK304 IC is a very common on many brands of washing machines. Basically it, it supplies the voltage for the control circuitry of this board. And when it shorts, it fails, it shorts, it blows out this resistor. So. To get this machine working again, we need to replace this IC and this resistor. The value of this resistor is really not critical. What we want to do is, what I am going to do is go to my junk stash, get another faulty control module with other fault, of course. Replace this, replace that, and we are good to go. So here we have our donor board and the board we are going to repair. If you don't own any fancy soldering equipment like a desoldering pump etc and you don't want to risk damaging anything, you can grab a, a very sharp knife and you can get a very sharp knife and you can cut the pins right next to the chip and leave the legs standing out then you cut the new the replacement you cut it next to the board and you weld leg to leg I'm going to do that just to show you how the result is it's not pretty it's not fancy but it will work fine be careful when dropping your control board on a metal surface or touching it because these caps are 400 volt caps they get mains across them so you can get zapped you're not gonna die of course like many people say you don't die from a capacitor zap but you can drop the board and damage it and it's annoying so avoid it discharge the capacitor before doing any type of work on this control board there we go chip is tacked in nothing fancy everything is soldered correctly if this can be called correct nothing is shorted nothing is touching everything is well fixed and sturdy so we are ready to fire this up So the repaired control module is fitted and moment of truth. Aha, uh -huh. see? Now we're going to do a spin cycle. See if it, everything else is good. Extraction pump is, is started now. Spinning, so we have a working machine. Now it would be a good time to remove the module again and recap it, replace those thousand microfarad 16 volt electrolytics, replace also the small ones. Maybe if you want 
to be extra careful also replace the 400 volt ones and you have a machine for another couple of years So earlier on this video I, I talked about the resistor that goes open together with the power supply IC. It's actually not this resistor, it's this inductor. It's not a resistor, it's an inductor. It was my mistake. This, induct this inductor usually heats up and, and goes open when the IC fails. So when you have a, an appliance like a washing machine or a fridge, that uses either the LNK style power supply package or the TNY. They come together with this inductor and the inductor fails often together with the IC. So you need to replace both or at least check the inductor and replace the IC. And you're good to go. So here we have another dumpster junkyard machine that I bought. And I'm going to test it right now. It's plugged in to the mains. The first thing I do when I get a new machine to test is I put it in the... Oh, this thing is stuck. I put it in the spin cycle. Why? There's a number of reasons for that. Spin cycle is the shortest cycle. It doesn't need any water on most machines, so you don't need to plug the machine to the water. And it tells you the health of the control module, the health status of the door lock, the motor, the belt, the drum, the buttons. So basically you can test 80% of the washing machine without plugging it into the water and waiting a long time. So what we want to do, we want to hit the start button. We want to hear the lock closing. Then the relay will click and the motor will start after the drain pump, of course. Door is now locked. Drain pump has started. Can you hear the noise? I heard the relay clicking but the motor is not running so this does not spin usually what what this is is either worn out carbon brushes on the motor or a bad drive belt but since I cannot hear the motor rotating it's probably the carbon brushes so we need to flip the machine on its side and check the brush condition so now we have the machine laying on the floor, here's our motor, there's one brush, another one right there. I would, uh, I wanted to show you the, the, the commutator, because when the brushes are worn out the commutator is all blacked out and, and damaged, but this motor is all closed right here so we cannot see it. But I'm going to remove the brushes to show you. We have a screw right there, another one there, another one there, and another one there. Maybe I can show you. No. Yeah, look look at that. There's the commutator, those copper bars. See how the they have the copper color on the bottom part, but they are all black on top and scratched. This tells me that this thing has been arcing for a while so the brushes are worn this is our problem and we are going to fix it so i got one of the brushes out look how small it is should be about this size when new so it's completely worn out I'll take a look at the commutator completely scratched. See that scratch in the middle? That is an indication that some arcing has been going on, that, on there for a while. Don't try to sand that too much. 
just clean it a little bit with fine sandpaper because if you sand it too much and if you don't know what you're doing you will end up shorting it so uh, if you are a beginner just fit new buy new brushes fit them and leave it as is it will probably arc a bit for the first minutes of operation but then everything will settle so now i'm going to try to find some used br good used brushes around here because i don't want to go do 20 kilometers to buy this these are cheap but i really want to fix this right now let's see if i can find something suitable around here here we have a nice rusty motor with some compatible brushes I'm going to remove them and see if they are any good if you manage to find some different brushes you can remove the carbon part and make it fit on the casing of the old brushes as long as they make contact with the commutator you are fine it's nothing critical they are a bit smaller no big deal if they are larger you can grind them and sand them to make them fit well these are much better they are maybe good for two three years or more so I'm going to fit these ones if one is good the other is probably good also So our brushes are fitted, let's test if the machine spins now. Door is locked. Pump is active. There you go, it's working fine now. Another one fixed. Next on the list to repair is this refrigerator. fine on the freezer and the bottom you can see it has some mice still remaining but there's nothing on the upper uh, fridge part we got here individual controls for the freezer and the refrigerator it's no use if you put it to maximum or minimum whatever here it's not cold so if we go to the back you can see we have two compressors so we got one compressor for the freezer and one compressor for the fridge I think I'm spelling that correctly so the first thing we want to do is turn off turn off the bottom part because we know it's working so we turn it off we want to put the upper part to medium or maximum whatever we want to plug this thing and we want to hear the compressor running so let's see got our plug here and let's see contact so nothing that's why it's not making cold because the compressor is not running
and I can tell that someone has been in here before because it's missing the plastic cover like on this one and this seems like a big mess but I'm going to explain to you how it works so forget about the yellow and green wire this is ground earth the blue wire is neutral and it comes from here and we have neutral constantly present here these brown wires are live or phase and we have constant phase on the brown wires always and then we have here a black wire connecting right here to the center and this black wire is switched live what does that mean it's switched on or off either by the thermostat or by the electronic control module depending if the fridge has a mechanical thermostat or an electronic one so when we have live on this wire the compressor starts when we don't the compressor stops so what are we going to do oops we are going to shunt one of these uh, brown wires to the black one and we are going to see if the compressor starts we're going to see if the fridge makes cold and if it does we are going to proceed with checking the fault so what I did is I simply unbolt the wire I'm going to stick it right here see if I can touch it to the black one there you go and now let's see contact can you hear it working now. Now I'm going to leave it like this for about 10-20 minutes and we will see if we have some ice on the top compartment. There should be a small layer of ice on the back wall of the fridge indicating that the compressor is good, that there is still refrigerant in the tubes. And five minutes have passed and a thin layer of ice is already starting to form on the back wall so this thing is fine we are going to remove this plastic bezel and see where the problem is from the touch of the buttons I think this is a mechanical thermostat so it will probably be a fault in the thermostat if it's an electronic control module we'll have to investigate a little bit further but uh, I'm confident that we will fix this one also. And I popped off the bezel and it's a mechanical system. You have two thermostats. These have copper probe that goes all the way inside the compartment of the fridge. And you cannot bend or break this because it contains a gas inside. So you need to be careful when removing and installing these things because it's the gas that uh, expands when cold and activates a membrane inside and that by, it, by its uh, action turns on or off the compressor. So this thing is plugged to the mains. I'm going to shunt the wires with the screwdriver and let's see if you can hear the compressor starting. Well, it's a bit silent, but it, the compressor started. So the fault is really an open thermostat. Let's replace it. So I removed the top of the refrigerator. It's over there. And as we can see, we got one of the probes entering this plastic tube and goes to the refrigerator compartment and the other one goes right here, down, down here and goes down over there to the freezer. That one we will not touch because it's working. This one, see this green sticker? It's here to indicate the depth, the depth that this thing needs to go down in order to make contact with the cold part. So we're going to push it push it, no, pull it. We're going to pull it and there we go. We need a wire of this length. It needs to go 
down the tube up to the mark where is where we have this green sticker so if we don't push it enough if we have a short wire and we don't push it enough down into the cold part the compressor will be running all the time and there will be tons of ice forming in the in the fridge because the tip of the probe will not make contact with the cold and it will not deactivate the thermostat ever no matter how cold or how icy this thing is so we need to put the, the, the new thermostat on, on the side with the old and we need to mark it put the sticker like this one has and push it all the way through to the sticker I hope I made sense so here we have a good used thermostat still in its original housing we're going to remove it and fit it over there when you're as you can see they are different this black and red one is a Danfoss and this one is Ranko but these are labeled with a numbering system I don't know if you can see on the picture no this one doesn't have the numbers or does it yes we have number three number six and number four number three and number four are the wires that make the the compressor switch on and off and number six is for the warning lights so when you remove the wires if you don't know what you're doing make sure to respect the the coding or <coughs> You either go by the color of the wires because it's a standard on all refrigerators or even better you go by the numbers but that's a thing i'll go i will explain in more detail in another video for now i'm going to remove this from here stick it there and plug this thing on and see if the compressor starts so everything is all hooked back up got the freezer turned off and the freeze is on medium position Let's see if the compressor is running now. Can you hear it? It's working. Found a cover for this. Everything is fine. Now, to make a good test, what we do is we grab two glasses with water. We put one over here, another one down there. We leave this thing 24 hours, the top glass needs to be cold but not frozen, the bottom glass needs to be frozen, solid. If it passes that test, it means that the compressor is shutting on and off, otherwise the top glass would be frozen also, indicating that the, the thermostat would be faulty. So, Top glass with water should be cold, very cold to the touch, but not frozen. And the bottom glass needs to be completely frozen solid. So about 10 minutes have passed and this thing is already starting to form a nice ice skin. I don't know if you can see the ice crystals on the video, but let's see if you can hear my fingernails scratching the ice. Can you hear it? It's different from the top. Look. So it's working fine. I still have to do the 24 hours test. I need to fit a new light bulb because this is all glued with tape. I need to fix this. But this thing's probably working fine. After the 24 hours test, fitting the light bulb and giving it a clean it's ready to go so we have fixed three appliances today without spending not even 50 cents uh, spending absolutely zero money and this is what you can do if you store some parts and if you have tools and knowledge <laughs>